lift our hands to Jesus and thank him for his faithfulness. Go ahead and bless him. Call him everything you know him to be. Call him savior. Call him redeemer. Call him helper. Call him restorer. Call him deliverer. Call him lifter. Call him waymaker. Call him the mighty God of Israel. Go ahead and bless him. Lord, we magnify you. Blessed be God forever. Someone is giving God quality thanks. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you because you are God. Now ask him to speak to you tonight. Cry unto him and say, Father, let your word come with fire. Let it come with grace. In this final service, give me an encounter tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Bible says on the last day of the feast, even though it was the last day, Jesus said, whoever is thirsty is still not too late. There is something about last days. On the final day of the feast, Jesus says, whoever thirsts, you can still come. For someone, you didn't come in January, you didn't come in February up until November even in December you are coming at this final service it is still a feast of fat things for you and God will visit and surprise you in the name of Jesus we look to Yahweh Yahweh our hope is Yahweh Yahweh we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever, forever, Yahweh, Yahweh, Lord, we look to Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Visit us tonight, O oh God, and let Jesus be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. May God bless you. Please be seated. Welcome to our final service for the year 2022. But that is by no means an end to your testimony. That is by no means to an, uh, an end to what God is doing in your life. For that which God does endures forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome your neighbor to your left and right in this final service. And tell them it's good to see you 
for some one last time hallelujah praise the name of the lord just to honor a few people um i think we should celebrate our global family one more time every once in a while we bless them is this the best you can do from america to the uk asia south africa kenya ghana everywhere that is not nigeria deserves a round of applause let's give them a big god bless you hallelujah thank you for your connection thank you for your love this is your family and for those of us who are here present the lord bless you and he will do you good in jesus name and then for all our international guests who made their way to this place here tonight the lord bless you we love you we appreciate and we recognize you let's have some of them if you are here and you came from outside nigeria you are an international guest please stand for one last time let's honor you give them a big 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 god bless you hallelujah it's incredible what god does in our midst every week we have literally tens of people from all over the world doesn't matter what service the lord will do you good tonight in jesus name god bless you please be seated just to honor a few um, great men and women in our midst hallelujah it's a joy and pleasure to honor dr doin okupe god bless you sir god bless you thank you so very much appreciate you please be seated and then his excellency the deputy governor of kogi state edward david god bless you sir thank you please be seated Pastor Kesta from Goshen, is he here? God bless you, sir. May the Lord honor you, Dr. Kesta. Thank you so very much. Oh, I just spotted him. Hallelujah. And then gloriously walked into our meet, Pastor Amos Fenwa, his lovely wife and their team. Let's give them a big, big God bless you, Holy Ghost Christian Center. Is this the best you can do? Give him a resounding koinonia welcome. We honor you, sir. Thank you so very much. And every other person, if I missed your name, um, this is a house of honor. We honor and we love you. Thank you for coming. The Lord will do you good in Jesus' name. Bazanji Soroba Mete Makona Bazanji Kunyaba one more time. Bazanji Soroba. Bazanji Kunyaba. That is my first prophecy for someone in the name of Jesus. Everything that stands to cause you shame by the power that raised Christ from the dead, let shame be rolled like a curtain. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. For anyone who has asked you where is your God, allow your testimony to bring the answer. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says they looked unto him and their faces were lightened. I hope you believe in the power of prophecy. Yes, sir. It will be unwise to not believe it. I taught you last week or week after, week before, prophecies program spiritual climate over people. It is very, very powerful. For someone in the name of Jesus Christ, this week before the year ends, I declare it your week of strange laughter. Strange laughter. May God do something that has not been done in the 11 months put together. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can you sing me that song? Somebody help me. It's a prophetic word for someone tonight.
Aleluya. This is the God that we serve. Who can visit men anytime God steps in. The word too late gets out of the equation. Too late is relative to the help of man. When God steps in, may God step in for you. I say it again, may my God step in for you. I don't know which God you believe in, but may my God step in for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. God bless you. I just needed to... Sometimes God just brings these words and they sound casual, but then they have a mysterious ability to lift men. Hallelujah. Be sensitive tonight and the Lord will grant us grace. Let me start tonight by appreciating everyone, even though I asked us to clap and celebrate ourselves, but I especially want to say thank you. Um, Romans chapter 1 from verse 1 to 5 is a scripture that just boils in my spirit when... Um, I communicate my gratitude. He said, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle and separated unto the gospel of God. Verse 2, we're reading to 5. He says, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scripture. He said, concerning his son Jesus Christ, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, uh -huh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Verse 5 now. It says, by whom we have received grace and apostleship. Grace and apostleship. It was received. It's more than a desire. We have received grace and apostleship. It says, for the obedience to the faith among how many nations? All. This grace and apostleship was mandated to bring nations to the obedience of the faith. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith. That is the reason why the grace came. That is the reason why the apostleship came. That by this grace and the ministry of apostleship will bring the nations to the obedience of the faith. Hallelujah. It was Paul, I believe, before Agrippa in Acts chapter 26, when we read verse, um, what verse is that now? Let's try 16. I think it should be 16, 17, 18. He said, but rise. He was sharing his testimony. Rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared unto you. He was narrating his experience now for this purpose. He says, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto you. Reading to 18. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom I now send thee. To what end? To open their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith which is in me. But how do we receive that inheritance? Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. It says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So access to that inheritance happens through knowledge. The word of God, it first builds up giving you capacity. Then it gives you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Hallelujah. I have a charge. My assignment is to charge our hearts tonight. As we celebrate the hand of God one last time, he declared this year for us as a global family to be our year of the marvelous light. And indeed, we have seen the light of God piercing across every darkness from Nigeria to the U.S., the U.K., across the globe. And we give him all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. My assignment tonight is to charge our hearts one final time for this year. 
as we brace up for the holiday season to prepare us to make sure that we make the most of what is available in Christ even at this time we've been called to be light and salt let's start with Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 Jesus was teaching the disciples alongside many who were invited to join his discussion and he said ye are the salt of the earth we have discussed this a number of times it says but if the salt has lost its sever in fact let's read it from amplified that hallelujah apologies for that ye are the salt of the earth it says but if the salt has lost its taste its strength its quality how can its saltiness be restored it is not good for anything any longer but to be thrown out and trodden underfoot by men so he's he's telling us here that he he likens us to salt and we have discussed extensively in this house that there are a few things we need to know about salt number one that the assignment of salt is to add taste and to preserve is that true every time you introduce salt it is to add taste to food and then to preserve what has been prepared and then the bible says that it is possible for salt to lose its saltiness its quality in fact one of the the version says its purpose it says how can it be salted again it is good for nothing except to be thrown out and underfoot of men we have also discussed in this house that it is never too late to add salt in food hallelujah there are certain ingredients that if you don't add at a certain time you have ruined the entire meal but not salt oh chevrolet franklin did i honor and appreciate you the gospel the gospel musician please stand god bless you the lord bless you all the way from us the jamaican yes the jamaican let's let's give her a big god bless you i just spotted her the lord bless you hallelujah thank you please be seated we love and we honor you my apologies for omitting your name and you you didn't come alone that's your husband please stand sir let's honor you together may the lord bless you thank you so very much we're happy to have you in our midst god bless you hallelujah are we together so the bible says that we are the salt of the earth please pay attention now we are the salt of the earth that means we have a mandate given by god and from god to number one add taste and number two to preserve this is very important and then 14 it says you are the light of the world this is very powerful you are likened to a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden that means visibility is everyone's heritage in christ visibility is everyone's heritage in christ you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden 15 says neither do men light a lamp and put it under let's go back to kjv under a bushel it says but a candlestick but it gives light to all those who are in the house the instruction now is in verse 16 it says let your light so shine someone says so shine prophesy to yourself so shine that means there is a way it can shine that men do not see it he's saying it should shine to an extent that men will see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven the entire purpose of the believer is to reveal and glorify jesus christ we have established this it is an anthem in this ministry that every other thing in your life finds its relevance from its ability to contribute to the revelation and the glorification of the christ in the realm of the spirit value is measured with respect to the revelation and the glorification of jesus let me repeat myself in the realm of the spirit value is measured with respect to the revelation and the glorification of the christ that means anything at all is of quality only to the degree to which it's it is a, it's able to reveal 
and glorify Jesus. Whether it is skill, wealth, beauty, grace, influence, impact, whatever it is. That means no matter what it is that you have, it is small and can even be valueless in the realm of the spirit if it does not sustain the ability to reveal and to glorify Jesus. Hallelujah. That means that at the back of everything we have and at the back of everything we are, please listen attentively, at the back of everything we have and at the back of everything we are, it must be that our principal objective is to reveal Jesus. You've listened to my teachings and I've taught on my concept of ministry. That ministry has nothing to do with the pulpit. Ministry has nothing to do with holding a mic and communicating to a congregation. No. Ministry in the spirit is not defined by the activities. Ministry is defined by the motivation and the goal. It is not the spirituality of the activity that defines ministry. It is the motivation. Any activity that is motivated by your love for Jesus, your love for people, and intended to reveal and glorify Jesus is called ministry. Even if that is pregnancy, even if that is business, even if that is marriage, even if that is cooking. It is not the religiosity of an activity that makes it ministry. I can preach here before this activity is called ministry there has to be a twofold system of vetting number one the intent behind my heart if the motive behind my heart is not the love for Jesus and the love for his people it's not ministry it can be preaching but not ministry then number two the goal must be ultimately to reveal Jesus, not just to reveal the man of God, not just to reveal intelligence, although all the aforementioned will be revealed on the way to revealing Jesus. But ultimately, it's all about you, Jesus, and all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. You alone are God and I surrender. One more time. This is all about you. Jesus and all this is for you for your glory and your fame it's not about me as if you should do things my way you alone are God and I surrender for someone this right here is a message for you that you need to re-edit your passions and your motivations. There is no problem with the activity. Your activity is excellent from the standpoint of men, except that it does not carry any weight in the spirit because it is not motivated by genuine love for God and people. Take note, if you love God alone, you are a hypocrite. You must love God and love people. It is impossible to love God and not love men because it is from the abundance of that love that you communicate that vertical and horizontal dimension must be captured I love God and I hate men you do not love him he says how can we say we love God whom we have not seen if you hate your brother that you see is that true so when you say you are a ministry let it not be because you preach well you may be wrong let it not be because you sing well you may be wrong let it not be because you are around a living church you may be wrong ministry is defined by two biblical indices number one your love for jesus and your love for people i don't want to say god because god means many things your love for jesus and your love for people and then number two that behind whatever you do whether it's prophesying collecting offerings singing playing the instrument that you desire to see jesus revealed and glorified you are in ministry Are we learning? So the Bible calls us light 
and then it calls us salt and I have taught you here that theologically speaking believers are classified in twofold number one according to our spiritual identity and then number two according to our function and assignment believers are basically classified according to scripture in twofold number one our identity so he calls us joint heirs with Christ hallelujah he calls us sons of God he says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us in that we be called sons of God he says now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like the Bible calls us co-heirs joint heirs with Christ and co-heirs with God is that true yes but then when it has to do with our function within the earth the cosmos he now begins to use names like witnesses he begins to use names like ambassadors an ambassador is one who is mandated to protect the interest and the integrity of the nation that he represents that means the ambassador has no assignment in a foreign nation except to watch for and to defend the interest of his nation is that true then he calls us witnesses he calls us battle axes several other names that attempt to define the believer based on function and tonight my my assignment is to give us a final instruction the word instruction is very important for many of us we know instructions to mean commands and so we fight it because we take it as an attempt to downplay your pedigree why should you give me an instruction but instructions are very powerful because if and when they are done in righteousness and in love they guide us with precision and exactitude into the place of destiny when you drive you can maneuver you can have opinions but when you fly they call those who train pilots instructors not drivers because in the air you are not given the liberty to guess your way around it's too risky you may not have a second chance are we together so those who train pilots are not called drivers those who train pilots are not even called coaches they are called instructors because we fly by instruction it says my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart he says it says they are life to those who find them and remember the law is who everyone that seeketh findeth if you do not seek there is no finding and health it says to their flesh hallelujah I'm going to be giving us five prophetic instructions that I believe the Lord placed in my heart and then we'll have the impartation and we'll wrap up for tonight I want you to please pay attention write every one of them down these are the instructions that if we keep in righteousness and by the grace of God there is a guarantee that not only our break but even 2023 would start on a good note most times because believers are bankrupt of prophetic instructions we tend to abort that which we have spent time even the whole year building you can imagine someone who had spent all the time building laboring and then because of carelessness you lose everything God is Alpha Omega he does not start and leave it there he starts and finishes are we together instruction number one this is God's word to us as a global family and then it extends to the body of Christ number one give yourself continually to the word and prayer please write it down give yourself continually to the word and prayer Acts chapter 6 and verse 4 this is the first prophetic instruction God is giving us that if we are to be light and salt indeed even whilst we're on the break and you know all through our Christian experience it's important for us to understand that we must give ourselves continually to the word and to prayer in Acts chapter 6 verse 4 this was the counsel of the Apostles they said but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word are we together 
Give yourself continually to prayer and the word. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 from verse 15 and 16, 1 Timothy chapter 4, 15 and 16, it says, meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them. Give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all. Your profiting will never appear unto all when you take casual spiritual things. The matters of the word, the matters of prayer. You must meditate upon these things. There are some these things you have learned throughout this year. It says you have a responsibility. In fact, the Bible says to give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. That means it is your responsibility to stop men from doubting the validity of your Christian experience. Are we together? Yeah. So number one, give yourself continually to the word and to prayer. Very quickly. Number two, what is the second instruction that God is giving us? Number two, invest in your health and your well-being. Invest in your health and your well-being. All through this break and for the rest of your life, invest in your health and well-being. I put in bracket rest. R-E-S-T. Please write it. Isn't it amazing that rest can be an instruction? Rest. In Genesis chapter 2 and 2 and 3, Genesis chapter 2, 2 and 3, a scripture that delivered me years ago, and on the seventh day, God ended his walk. That means if you are lazy, you are not like God. Please look up. This is a message already for someone. The Bible says, even though God owns all things, it was not an excuse for laziness. How can the creator still be walking? The Bible says on the seventh day God ended his walk which he had made and he rested and he rested and he rested. God rested. On the seventh day from all his walk which he had made. Verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work. Can I tell you? Rest, medical science tells us that rest is therapeutic. There are many people who have died today not because of demons. It is the absence of the understanding of the laws of life. Are we together now? Spirituality, if not tampered with wisdom, can lead a man to destruction. Especially in Africa, we pride in a lot of fanatism without the boundary that wisdom brings. And we stretch ourselves not knowing that we are still bound in this mortal body. And we do that to our detriment. There are people today collapsing left, right and center. You see, the thing about health, as I have learned, is that the consequences are not seen immediately. It usually accumulates one upon another. If in your 40s you start having a health problem, chances are excellent. It is the cumulative effect of carelessness from right from early 20s. Just because you are careless with your body and you wake up fine does not mean you are all right. Are we together? Give yourself continually to word and prayer and then invest in your health. In Mark chapter 4 from verse 38, very powerful scripture. Mark 4, 38. Apostle, you are saying I should rest. It's because you don't know the fire that is on my mountain. The Bible says, and as he was in the hinder part, the he being Jesus of the sheep, asleep on a pillow. In fact, let's do 37. Let's start from 37. The Bible says the disciples were going to the other side and there arose a great storm of wind. Is that in your Bible? And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. What happened to Jesus? And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. What details? You can rest in the midst of storms. Don't give me an excuse that because the, there are storms, you do not rest. Jesus showed us that even in the midst of storms, I will soar with you above the clouds. Father, you are king over the storm. And I will be still and 
So right now, if I if I have a way of getting, even if it's a small bag of rice, I will be the happiest person. Rest. Rest is not all about closing your eyes. You can close your eyes and still be awake. I hope you know that. In fact, there is a there is a skill of worry that happens only when your eyes are closed because then your imagination is alive. Rest. Even though I'm talking about your health, it extends to every... Let me tell you this. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house. It's in your Bible. Except the Lord builds a house. It says they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. It says the watchmen watch it but in vain. That it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow. But here is a gift many of us have not received. But he giveth his beloved. So rest and sleep is a gift. You have accepted anointing. When God stretches his hands, collect everything that comes from him. Rest is a gift that also comes from him. He giveth his beloved sleep. Hallelujah. Invest in your health as a commitment to your longevity. I have charged you here. I do not believe that medical science is, is an interruption to faith. Faith is a journey and believers grow and transit there is a level of divine health in experience but while we are transiting to that dimension we thank god for the gift and the blessings of medical science that midwife our health while we keep transiting do not feel embarrassed to seek the attention of medical science you are sick and you pray and it does not work please go and don't be discouraged there are many people who just Paying attention to a doctor's report can, can bring to end many needless prayer points. Prophesy to yourself. Say rest. rest. Say my soul. My soul. Find, rest. find rest. My body. My body. Find, rest. find rest. You know, we speak to our souls and we leave our bodies. Find rest. Is someone learning already? Take it as an instruction. Rest. When you close your door, don't just say, I'm um, praying. You, when you are done praying, rest. There are times you can lie down quietly. This is one of the reasons why in spite of the blessing of the Lord, especially upon Africa, it looks like, you know, statistic tells us that the, the average lifespan, I don't know if it's, if I've not verified the latest, but I think it was about 48 or there about, you know, um, some time back. Minus me. In the name of Jesus Christ. He says, with long life shall I satisfy you and show you my salvation. But you must rest. So use this opportunity to rest. Use this opportunity to rest. Number three. Invest in building and maintaining your relationships. This is the third prophetic instruction. Invest in building and maintaining your relationships. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, please, from verse 9 and 10. Invest in building and maintaining your relationships. The Bible declares without confusion that two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Verse 10, it says, For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Men don't just stand up, they are helped to go up. Are we together? 
relationships are advantageous connections i have told us extensively we have dealt with it here that one of the dominion systems of the kingdom is the power of relationships the word be fruitful means be relational because everything multiplies on the basis of relationships everything there is nothing that multiplies in isolation even the seed it is in a relationship and partnership with the ground the soil that it produces for if it abides alone it does not grow except it falls to the ground hallelujah your possibilities are relationship dependent your relationship with the lord jesus christ your relationship with men and here by relationship i mean number one family this is an opportunity to catch up with family listen let me tell you something one of the wisdom keys i am praying that god will help us understand is that there are people in your life today who may not be in your life tomorrow again it is important to maximize moments because life is transitory sometimes we are busy making money busy trying to make a name that we forget the weightier things that matter and at the end of it you will have all the money you will have everything but you'll find out you are alone it is very important I was delivered years ago I, I shared with you my experience already I used to visit my family I think it was just once a year because of you know the burden traveling up and down and one time I remember I'm sure she's even watching my dear mom and um, we're having this we have a, a family prayer and uh, at the beginning of every year and it was time for any other business and she just lifted her hands and pointed and she said well she has an observation she said and the observation um, was for me she said well sometimes the same way you are counseling others your own family too wants to be able to have some time we also have issues and you know and even if it's a little time you know I should be able to give them and I went back to the room that night and I remember I cried and I made a commitment I said this is a lesson for me in all my going around the world i will do the best i can to make sure that i honor my family this is a message for someone everybody is calling you emoji they will soon say crucify you let me you need to know listen i'm not i'm not being sarcastic but it is the reality in this world of men when people clap for you most times they are only clapping for themselves through you so it's important to really define, know who and what is worth your, the commitment of your time, your energy. Many of us invest our energy in the wrong places and to the wrong people. And at the end of our lives, we are pierced and shredded to pieces because it looks like the people that really mattered, you ignore them, pursuing those you think matter. Is someone learning? Invest in your family. Some of you have not seen your loved ones. They only saw you January 2nd. You say, I must return back rich. And now because things are not in place, you are ashamed. Look, swallow your pride and go back home. And see them and say, God is still faithful. Yeah. Are we together? Yes. Strategic friends. Destiny relationships. Some of us are very hardworking. But we are programming seasons of pain because we are not thoughtful you never say hello to anybody you will be in trouble the day you need help Christmas you eat everything by yourself you even cut the animal by yourself cook it by yourself eat everything by it's too bad this is not even about this is even it's not even whether it's right or wrong it is sinful to your own life are we together some of us never look beyond ourselves you know that i love you this is an instruction you've never given anybody any hamper you've never given anybody anything you, you, you this was the way you were as a student five years after graduation you are working like this a gentleman in an oil and gas company you've not bought one bag of rice to say please share it to two or three people what no giving is living listen listen there are some of you flashing designers from head to toe and your loved ones do not even have even if it's just a goat or a ram repent in the name of jesus christ repent 
make sure that you send something home and say this is an expression of my love and thank you so much uh, but you don't know what they did to me forget about what they did and bless them one day they will not be here and it is the memory of your kindness that will be left is someone learning invest in building quality relationships now that you have some time even if you cannot visit you can just take the time write the names of 10 people ah, how has it been how has this year been may god bless you i just thought to reach you congratulations sorry i could not come and greet you your wife gave birth in february and i could not give birth but it's better late than never swallow your pride They gave birth, you were not there. Burial happened, you were not. Nothing, you are, it's, it's a risk. Listen, let me tell you the truth. The implication of our carelessness affects our children and our children's children. I used to wonder why my parents growing up, they were at every burial. Have you seen naming ceremony? And yeah, come on, do you know the whole world? Naming ceremony, you are there. Burial, you are there. Now, you see, when you grow by, you understand some things. There are certain levels of kindness that someone receives. Mephibosheth, you will only be helped for Jonathan's sake. Is there anyone in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Otherwise, what, would a, what will a crippled man be doing in a king's palace? And Ziba, who had been there serving him, he said, Ziba, even though you are here, go to Lodaba, go and carry that crippled man. You will sit and eat with me here and your 15 sons will be farming for this boy there are things you do in the lives of people today huh you may not have all the resources and everything but i'm telling you you are programming blessings in your life there are people who have long gone today but there are others who have vowed that their children will never beg because of something they did while they were alive don't be too selfish and limited in your own world it can't just be about me alone Are you learning? Yes. Be kind. Your family, be kind. And if God has blessed you here and you have money, let me tell you respectfully speaking, your money is not doing much. If your family and those who have truly contributed to your life don't at least benefit something from it. It may not be a right, but it is wisdom. Some things are not about right and wrong. They are about wise and unwise. Are we together? Invest in relationships. Someone who was there for you, someone who prayed with you this year, you will be surprised. God can tell you, listen, buy a bag of rice, send it. Don't put yourself under pressure. The Bible says every man should give according, you know, according to the blessing of the Lord upon your life and according as you have proposed in your heart. So this is by no means to put you under pressure. But I hope you know that giving is not just about money. Money is not the only thing to give. You can give love. You can give kindness. You can give thoughtfulness. Someone, you heard that someone has been in the hospital, in maybe, you know, the general hospital here. Now is the opportunity. You are a bit free. You can decide to carry your wife. Don't go alone. Carry your wife and maybe something, even if it's 10 naira, say we just came to greet you, visit with you. May God bless you. The Lord increase you in Jesus' name. Let me tell you the truth. In the world of men, little things matter. Let me repeat myself again. In the world of men, little things matter. It is not all about money. Money can be very deceptive. There are times that you bring money and the... the the backlog of a negative attitude that follows the money makes it undesirable. Are we still together? Shout amen. amen. So invest in your family, invest in friends, invest in destiny relationships. Apostle, but they don't call me. Love and friendship is a harvest. Don't expect a harvest over a seed you did not sow. Are we together now? Yes. It is about you, but not all about you. You must ensure that you are able to extend to people. Someone was kind to you early this year. Listen, part of investing in relationship, write it down. Write at least 10 people who you are going to tell thank you this year. This remaining part. There have to be 10 people in your life 
who have made meaningful contributions be honest be vocal be intelligent enough to communicate thanks i've taught you on thanksgiving saying thanks or thank you is not how to say thank you the goal of saying thank you is to make the receiver perceive that you are grateful until the receiver perceives that you are grateful you have not said thank you you don't say thank you at your terms you say thank you until the receiver comes to an understanding that you are really grateful someone gives you a thousand naira you say thank you he gives you hundred thousand you say thank you he gives you a million you say thank you he gives you 10 million you say thank you you are not grateful no just because you said thank you, you are, all of those things do not carry the same weight are we together now the church is the place of wisdom so this is where God helps to file our spiritual understanding Learn, listen, let me tell you, there are people who may not have the grace or favor upon them, bar, but their sense, gratitude midwives the presence of favor until favor comes. They are too grateful to be ignored. You give them, you give them a plate of food. They will thank you as if you bought them an aircraft. You feel guilty ignoring them because of how thankful they were. Six months after this, they are still reminding you again. But there are other people you have made people to vow vows before god that they have to ask for forgiveness later on because of your attitude i'm sorry if it sounds hard i love you you know that but receive it as a take home as a final word learn to be thankful don't take the kindness and the love and the generosity of people for granted your head of department was there for you say thank you i told you it's not about giving things we, somehow we have a mentality that once you bring money or once you bring items it means you are grateful no gratitude is feelable you can feel gratitude thank you sir for helping me thank you for doing this thank you for doing that and that includes respectfully speaking that includes spouses because sometimes the greatest helpers in our lives are the ones who are most neglected because of familiarity sometimes you need to take a special time parents thank your children children thank your parents spouses thank yourself are we together your boss your staff bosses learn to thank your staff and subordinates don't say if you are tired get out of my office soon you will be alone be humble enough to thank them you, you may be the face that is seen, but they are the hands that make that face visible. Don't ignore people's contribution in your life. Mama, thank you. Thank you. And Mama says for what? All the text messages with the prayer that you sent to me all the time, they added to encourage me to what I am now. I'm just using this opportunity to say thank you. Mama may not be able to give you anything, but that sworn blessing that comes from her spirit will, will be like a lift to the next season of your life. Are we together honestly there are many of us that are not grateful i i know this by the spirit it, compared to the investment of god and people in our lives we need to step up there are people who can call uncles uncle have been calling i'm the one who sent you a text five days ago uh, that rent now and you keep you send 10 page text messages then he transfers the money and you send one word thanks you beg with 10 page text messages and one word thanks say father in the name of jesus i obtain grace to be grateful one more time say father in the name of jesus i obtain grace let me tell you gratitude can be a stream of income you can live off gratitude literally like someone leaves off real estate another person leaves off business there are people you see you think they are scammers because you what are you really doing they live off being grateful even to the lord god of heaven that you get down on your knees and say lord look what you've done look at your hand upon my life look at your faithfulness and god says but you said thank you yesterday you say i'm coming back again and god says you've done this for me you are ready for the next level and that chapter opens up one of the greatest ways to maintain relationships i am telling you 
no matter how how ignorant you are about the laws of relationship learn gratitude and you have mastered over half of the keys to maintaining relationships nobody runs away from a grateful person you can run away from a gifted person but not a grateful person please write it down gratitude 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 Is someone learning number four are you ready for number four this is very serious and I want you to please pay attention the fourth instruction is go on an end of year retreat go on an end dash of year retreat end of year or personal retreat if you want to write it that way go on an end of year retreat you can never sustainably be light and salt until you understand the power and the mystery of retreats. Isaiah chapter 40, please. Let's begin our reading from verse 28. The Bible there spells clearly the condition of man. It says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainted not, neither is he weary. It's a question. There is no searching of his understanding. Now, 29, it says, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Here is the condition of man that necessitates retreat. Ready? One to read. Let's read together. Even the youth shall faint, and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall this is not a negative pronouncement it's a description of a condition that is common to all men that the wear and tear that happens to you spiritually emotionally psychologically and even physically provided you are bound in this mortal body that that wear and tear is present with all men that even the youth the bible says the glory of the young men is their strength but that the youth will faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall the bailout is in 31 but they that means not everybody will be interested in this spiritual process but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles the Bible says by this mystery they will run and it will look like they never get tired you are human but why are you not tired because they have found the power and the excellency of retreats and then they shall walk and not faint what is a retreat let's discuss this point for seriously a retreat is a time set apart to be with the lord please write a retreat is a time set apart to be with the lord to obtain renewal direction and fresh empowerment a retreat is a time set apart to be with the lord to obtain renewal to obtain direction and to obtain fresh empowerment i'll take it one last time that a retreat is a time set apart to be with the lord to obtain renewal to obtain direction and to obtain fresh empowerment so when we talk about a retreat for a believer it means a time that you set apart to be with the Lord. Retreats can be corporate. That means a corporate organization, a church can have a retreat, an individual, a family can have a retreat. But my emphasis here for tonight is a personal retreat. Hallelujah. And there are a number of things that must be captured in your retreat. So you can call it 4A or let me just guide you many of us do not understand what we need to do during a retreat it's important that i spell this out just to create a guide for us so that you will have an effective and a rich retreat many people just lock themselves and they fast and pray sleep and wake up even watch movies and go out that is not an effective retreat 
there are a, a few things that must happen in a retreat otherwise it's not a retreat number one thanksgiving a retreat is a moment of lavish uncensored thanksgiving thanksgiving psalm 92 from verse 1 to 4 let's hurry up we're discussing retreats as one of the instructions and now just helping us to shed more light what and what should happen in a retreat number one thanksgiving it is a good thing the bible says to give thanks unto the lord and to sing praises to thy name O most high reading to four verse two to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night three upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery upon the harp with a solemn sound verse 4 it says for thou O lord had made me glad through thy walk i will triumph in the works of thy hands it is a good thing to give thanks to the lord your retreat is not complete it's not even started if you do not start with thanksgiving so you are asking apostle if i set out time with god what should happen what are the activities that define a potent retreat number one thanksgiving you lock up yourself and you say lord thank you look what you've done in my life thank you for your mercy is that true you begin to list them you count your blessings one by one it says all oh, that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his marvelous works to the children of men he has broken the gates of brass. He has caught the bars of iron in sunder. Lord, thank you for life. Thank you for grace. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head I lay me down and I slept I wait for the Lord sustain me the last time I checked statistic tells us that eight people die per second eight people die per second I don't know how I don't know what's the current figure now eight people that means from the time i started this message till now count how many people have died we need to learn to be grateful to god be thankful count your blessings and mention them one by one lord look what you've done in my life look what you've done in this ministry look what you've done in this family i am here to say thank you like the one leper the bible records that jesus was on his way passing but when the one leper returned he found him still waiting there he waits for your gratitude thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting my for some of you in the midst of the chaos and the economic crisis in this nation and across Africa, God preserved you as if you did not stay here. Some of you did not even have jobs yet you never begged. How could you be so insensitive and careless when you get before the God of heaven, you, you get down on your knees and say thank you. You have changed my story. You have turned my mourning to dancing, my sorrow to joy. That all who knew me can no longer identify me because the Lord has magnified fight me in the midst of his people learn to be thankful number two what do I do in a retreat be an honest appraisal of the year or the season an honest appraisal this is the second thing you do in a retreat an honest appraisal appraisal is spelled a p p r a i s a l a p p r a i s a l an honest appraisal of the year past or the season past a retreat is usually is uh, there are all kinds of retreats i'm not going in there i've done those teachings and i'm sure that i will do it again next year but just for you to know that there are periodic retreats weekly 
there are monthly retreats but there are strategic retreats at defining moments in your life like maybe birthdays or end of year like we have it now because a major season is changing in your life an honest appraisal of the year or the season past in some 30 in, in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1 the Bible says through desire a man having separated himself he says he seeketh and intermeddleth with wisdom when you when you take out time to be thoughtful and to appraise the year you appraise the year against a number of parameters number one your spiritual life i'm just listing them number two your mental transformation number three your health and your wellness number four purpose and your assignment to what degree did you advance on that wise number five your finances number six your relationships there are indices that you use to appraise yourself don't just get there and say did I make money this year yes I think it was a nice year no we always use parameters like money and physical things to measure how good the year was but the success is a is a composite of many dimensions your excelling in all these dimensions is, is what adds to your overall success your spiritual life mental transformation your health and your wellness your finances your assignment relationships Take an honest appraisal of your life. Is someone learning now? How was this year 2022 spiritually? Can I say I made progress? My prayer life, my word study life. Did I grow in character, loving and, and, and walking in the ways of God? How about mental transformation? Did you submit yourself to superior materials to build your mind, build your philosophies and your orientation? How about your health? Hallelujah. How about your finances? Some of you didn't do well this year in your finances. And the product, you see, you do not prosper off the economy. You prosper off your understanding. It is true. The economy only contributes to your prosperity. It's not the basis of your prosperity. It is your understanding, your philosophy, your overall understanding. It is not even what you do. It is what you know that supports what you do. So if you find out that it was a bad year, sadly speaking, financially, there's no need beating yourself down. That's the purpose of a retreat. You take inventory. Some of us were blessed by God this year, but we were careless over our finances. If you take inventory, millions, tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions and even billions got into our hands. But there may not be anything to show for it because we spent it like the prodigal son and now we are feeding with the swine. But thank God the prodigal son showed us that there is still hope. He says, I will arise and I will go to my father. In your case, you must arise and go from where you started correctly from. Are we learning? Very, very powerful. How about purpose and assignment? Do you know there are people, I was so touched by the testimony of the gentleman here. He said when he got a job, notice the decline in his life now. There are people, the moment they become blessed or the blessings of the Lord start speaking in their lives, especially financially, let me tell you the truth, it takes a greater level of discipline to still maintain spiritual things when you are blessed because now you have options. There are many people that look good. They are not good. It's just the economic condition that made them that way because there is no option. You are, you are righteous to the degree to which we see the alternatives in your life are we together if you are poor don't say you are humble by what parameter we have to see we, we, we you have to be given an opportunity to see that I can go this way but I choose to remain this way now you are deserving of honor are we learning now this is very important an honest appraisal of your life let me tell you the truth do you know why a retreat is personal? Because that is a time where you tell the absolute truth before God. If you lie to yourself in a retreat, I don't know what to call you now. 
I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. A time of appraisal is when Jesus himself, the light, shines his light upon your life and you see yourself in the state of who he is. Ah, this year I did not do well in my spiritual life. This year I was careless. This year as a father, I was not responsible over my family. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You are before the God of heaven. This year I've been, I was insensitive to my wife and my children. Maybe because of the financial pressure, I did something that I did not believe I would do. Lord, you see, when you have an understanding from the place of appraisal, now you can cry for his mercy. Thoughtfulness is powerful. To lock yourself and sit down. Ah, I lost this favor door because of carelessness and insensitivity. What can I learn from it? Is someone learning? Number three, what do you do during a retreat? I hope I've not lost you. What do you do during a retreat? A retreat is a moment to get direction for the next season. Please write it down. When you are done with appraisal, next is direction. Direction. Your retreat is not over if you come out confused. Because you have, that is the assignment of that place. Why am I teaching you this? So that you know what to avoid. It means anything that can distract you should not follow you to the place of retreat. For instance, movies. Except if it's a movie that teaches you something. Most of us, you already know your vulnerability. When you are going for a retreat, be serious. You can't carry a series, uh, 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 what they call these thing, people. You know, all the, the movies and all of that. And then you pray for 30 minutes and then you just promise yourself that I'll just watch for 10 minutes or football or something. And before you know it, three days, people clap for you thinking you were flogging it out with destiny, whereas you allowed yourself to be distracted. See, look up, please. Laugh, but listen. The Bible says, seeing then that we we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us. And it says to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set where? Before him. He endured the cross and despised the shame. If your phone would distract you off it. Personally, during a retreat, I off my phone completely or I can put it on flight mode. If I need to use it, maybe get some information from it. You can on it by 12 midnight for 10 minutes so that all the text messages that should come in, come in and then you off it back in case there's an emergency. Ah, Apostle, I'll off my phone. You see, that you should go and flog out that issue in a retreat. The fact that you cannot give up uh, gadgets just to spend time with God it means then that you may not be having the kind of focus it takes for a great destiny someone shout direction. direction our speed in life is based on the direction we have your life will always slow down if you don't know where you are going even in driving if you know where you are going you will run with speed and arrive there but if you don't know where you are going, you have to slow down in case you are wrong. It's dangerous to turn the path of destiny in confusion. Psalm 32 and verse 8. This is a prophetic word for someone. Psalm 32 and verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eyes. Someone shout amen. amen. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 6. It says... In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. God can direct men. In the place of retreat, you are flogging it out. And God says, listen, this location you are, you need to move to another one. One word from God can bail you out. Are we together? Yes. 
I told you that the power of God only supports what is the will of God. The, 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 the administration of spiritual power is with respect to the will of God. Outside of the will of God, the power of God does not have an assignment. The assignment of the power of God is to bring you into the will of God. Direction. Number four. What should happen in a retreat? Are you ready? Planning and resolutions for the next year. When you obtain direction from God, it is now time to plan. Planning and resolutions for the next year. So you have opened up yourself for appraisal. You know what is right and what is wrong. You have obtained direction from God. It's now time to plan. I think it's God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo, that said, praying without planning is playing without knowing. It is true. There is a place for planning. Most believers don't plan. We stumble into our tomorrow and we meet it unplanned. Sadly, we do this as individuals. We do this as corporate organizations, as families. People just enter the year sometimes with blind, unrealistic resolutions. You have to settle down and to plan. How will my 2023 be like? Okay, God has spoken. I have heard. I know where he's taking me. I need to plan. Luke chapter 14, 28 to 30. Luke 14, 28 to 30. For which of you, intending to build a tower, seated not down first and counted the cost? That's planning. The assignment of planning is to help you count the cost. Whether he have sufficient to finish it, 29 less happily after he had laid the foundation and is unable to finish it all that behold him begin to mock him saying 30 this man began to build and was not able to finish the ability to finish also depend on proper planning I'm going to plan my spiritual life for 2023. My work made me so busy and it affected my prayer life, my word study life. I have to create a system that factors in my life. Please look at me. Do you know why many people, uh, I'm, I, and I'm saying this now with respect to, you know, the younger generation. Do you know why many people finish from school, colleges of, you know, education, universities, and then their spiritual lives go down? Because within that environment, there is not much you are doing. You don't have responsibility of children. You don't have other things. So it is just maybe lecture, prayer, fellowship, and that's all. Now you are a father of three. Now you are a father of four. Now you are a senior executive in a corporation that your presence can be called anytime. They can call you impromptu and say, please be in London tomorrow by evening. You have to redesign your spiritual life to factor in the current reality in your life. If you use the template of campus where you could pray for eight hours nonstop, you will be an ineffective person. That worked because you did not have certain responsibilities. For some of you, sadly, maybe then your parents were alive. Then certain people who, were, who supported you were alive. Now you have to redefine your approach to insist that by all means, your job, your growth, your responsibilities do not affect your spiritual life. This is the product of planning. 350,000 Naira five years ago is not 350,000 Naira today. Do you agree with me? And this is not just a Nigerian thing, in all fairness. This is a global thing. It affects everywhere. It's just that, of course, we have a unique expression of our own. But I'm saying that generally, there is no nation that has been immune to a lot of, you know, economic heat and all of that. So it means you need to plan. You need to plan. I'm earning 500,000 per month or 200,000 per month. Sometimes, well, it's not for me to speak to you, but sometimes part of planning can be to not give birth to the next child yet. Yes, sir. You know, in Africa, we, we do a lot of things sometimes without thinking. We just keep making mistakes that later just pound on us. You cannot be earning 100,000 and you have six children. It's not realistic. You can't be sending them to everybody. People can help you, but it's not their responsibility to take care of you. Are we together now? 
you ruin the life of those innocent children until they are recruited to be terrorists and the rest because there was no responsibility when you want to build a house the bible says sit down that kind of course you don't do it standing you sit down that means your mind is calm now that i'm about to do this am i prepared for this oh i'm earning hundred thousand i hate that job i need to resign if you resign what is the plan it is hundred thousand it may not be the best but it's still not the worst at least it can cover your shame in terms of your basic needs while you are trusting God to scale higher someone shout planning. planning please take the time to plan you are a leader over any ministry or any organization here have a personal retreat to plan in Koinonia you already know 31st December 6 p.m. on the dot the prophetic word for the next year is out without fail there is no excuse whatsoever planning it's not something that happens just overnight no this is the last service it was planned the next service is already planned see this is one of the blessings that we learned in the seminary respectfully speaking you see most of the organizations that we may call orthodox and this they are master planners Pentecostal charismatic circles if we are not careful we can randomly do things and we say as the spirit leads it is important to plan your child is going to school in January they've increased his school fees have you seen the PTA letter until you see don't buy the cow yet you can manage with chicken and you can't go and buy a cow of 500,000 and then be begging for money for 100,000 for your child planning it may not be for everybody but this is a prophetic word for someone in a retreat please plan okay the house rates have increased I may not have my own property now but how much do I pay 1.5 2 million naira how did I raise the 1.5 2 million naira the last time oh it was a gift will it remain a gift forever no so I need to plan if you know it will come through relationships start greeting the people in advance since that is this part of planning it is funny but it is true please let me have your attention we have a lot to do listen the house of God is a place of wisdom and if we are bankrupt of wisdom our lives will be hard don't send somebody a text Two days to help and say Calvary greetings you know I'm, I'm, I'm um, just just I, I'm just asking out how you are doing and then ten minutes later here comes a long list like an exam question just to, no 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 planning my wife is pregnant she's going to give birth in nine months that's nine months notice how do you say oh I didn't plan for CS what does that mean nobody prays for CS but an intelligent person you will plan what if listen we hope for the best but we prepare for anything faith is not foolishness don't be angry oh I love you this is a retreat this is a I'm, I'm, I'm teaching us because this thing we, we need to bring wisdom to the body of Christ you don't move around when your wife is already in the theater you are just calling and say wickedness nobody likes me no shout amen please plan as a father if you did a bad job over your family don't worry don't beat yourself down but plan why is the spiritual life of this family going down okay it's because we don't pray maybe that time of fellowship is not there maybe I'm too busy to spend time with my wife and children how can I be a better father I'm an exceptional CEO but my family is dying something needs to go well Create a program, even if it's once in a month, I'm going to spend some time with my family. Anybody who calls you, tell them, please, I'm spending time with my family. This is one of the blessings of the white and people in the West, sincerely. You can literally give an excuse that I'm spending time with my family and they will respect it. What our great, wonderful nation, spending time with your children. So it's us that don't have to, okay. Let's finish up. What should happen in a retreat? Obtain the doing grace. Write doing grace in capital. Your retreat is not complete until you obtain the doing grace. 
there is a grace called the doing grace the doing grace because your plans and your resolutions will come to naught if you do not put them to action to work the doing grace has a mandate to put fire upon your bones until there is execution the assignment of the doing grace is to not give you rest until you put your thoughts your plans that are on paper you make them work on two legs the in john 13 17 john 13 17 if ye know these things the bible says happy are ye if ye do them so it's not enough to know i have said i'm going to buy a car next year by the grace of god that car is five million naira i've raised two million naira we thank god for grace god is granting me grace as i plan you obtain grace you start doing doing I've made up my mind that my family will be happy this year. My wife and children will not have cause to say I'm an irresponsible father. That is a, an excellent plan. What are you going to do about it? You obtain the doing grace. Do you know? Let me tell you the truth. Without the doing grace, all plans will come to naught. The same way many of us, you can go back to your January journal and see many beautiful things you wrote. And some of us, sadly, not even one of them has been done. It's because you missed the last ingredient of your retreat, obtaining the doing grace. Lord, let that grace come from heaven that makes men to run, that makes visions to run. The doing grace. Romans 7, 19. Romans 7, 19. Paul was speaking and he... he vocalized his frustration he said for the good that i would i do not but the evil which i will i would not do that i do that means he's saying listen by my spirit there is a willingness to do this but i find another law there is another energy that is depleting my passion and not giving me the impetus the drive to move forward for someone here who has been planning, planning forever without doing, in the name of Jesus, let this be the season where the grace for execution comes upon you. Yeah. Hallelujah. One day I will get that land. You've not gone around the neighborhood to even see where any empty land is. Chances are excellent you may never build. Listen, even if it is one billion you need, it will still come by faith. Don't be afraid. And for someone you want to build a house, your budget is 50 million or 100 million, depending on the kind of house. And all that you have is 1 million. Let me tell you the truth. One thing I know is that signs follow. They don't go before. If you cannot take a step of faith, believing God to help you, it's better to die in his presence than to live jumping outside of his presence. There are certain risks you cannot escape. It will always be by faith. You can take that one million and buy as much blocks or sharp sand and go and pour it on that side there and say, Father, this is a sign of faith. I have made you Alpha, be Omega. I started this building with you. Now your reputation is part of this architecture for your namesake and you'll be surprised. Someone will call you and say, are you building? Say, yes. Say, God just said I should give you 10 million. And before you know it, the day you finish that building, if they ask you where did the money come from, you say sincerely, even me, I've added everything. I don't know where the rest came from. God is bringing healing to someone. Don't be discouraged. I don't just mean bodily healing, healing in your mind. Because... The Lord is just ministering to me that there are people here who have been frustrated. It looks like your life never moves forward. There is, you are not doing anything. People are already speaking and saying, what kind of person are you? It's like a complete mark time in every area of your life. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace. Always hunger for oh, our hearts always hunger. One more time. Hey, hey, hey. You are the one that we pray. something
everything I know about God. I don't know everything about him. We remain students learning him. But let me tell you something about God. God restores. This is a word for someone. Apostle, even my wasted years, my goodness, did he not say I will restore the years? Don't sit down and say, by now I would have built the house. By now I would have had the children. By mm -mm -mm -mm. There's, there's no point for regret. You are talking to the God who owns time. He's not limited to time. Look at the gentleman. He said for how many years his life had been on drugs and all kinds of things. But restoration, just like that. There is hope for a tree, even if it be cut off. Some of you, even in terms of establishment, it looks like nothing is working in your life. All kinds of witchcraft, delays, demonic things, fine rest. My God, Ba, is able to restore men and take 10 years and put it in one year. Yes, this is true for you, whether in politics and governance. This is true whether in your career life, I've not got a job and things don't seem to be working. Remember tonight is an impartation. We're getting there now. Listen carefully, ladies and gentlemen. The God that I know and the God that I serve can restore. Apostle, my prophetic grace, the, the anointing upon my life would have been at a dimension now. But I became inconsistent at a point. I became careless. I was, I, you know, I was just frost. Don't worry. Don't worry. Apostle, I would have built by now. You can imagine. I don't even have a plot of land. I am 50 years. Fine rest. The God of heaven that I know, that you know, that you have come to serve can give you rest with the dignity of kingdom integrity rest that you don't have to bend your head in shame because you maneuvered and bribed your way around no you give the healing and grace that my heart always Let me speak to a family here that had it rough this year and has had it rough the years past and you're saying God are you alive all we recorded this year was death of our loved ones maybe repossession of our properties whatever it is and it looks like the only thing I can say was right in my life you may say is that my walk with God did not go down but like Job I've been beaten I do not even know what to do the Bible says in Job 42 and verse 10 that God restored the fortunes of Job. So God is a restorer. Is someone learning? So that's that about retreat. The fifth instruction. What is the fifth instruction to us? Share the love of Jesus to all around you. This is the fifth prophetic instruction we are receiving tonight. You want to be light and salt, even in this season? Share the love of Jesus to all around you. You cannot afford to be passive. You cannot afford to be silent. You cannot afford to be careless as far as the love of Jesus is concerned. Share the love of Jesus to all around you. The Bible teaches us, listen, help us under the anointing. The Bible teaches that there are two principal ways to share the love of Jesus. Number one, preaching. Number two, giving. The most effective ways to do both. Number one, I repeat, preaching. Number two, giving. In truth, it may not be convenient for everybody in terms of the preaching of the gospel as we know because our world has changed. We used to do one-on-one -on -one evangelism, but right now you don't have that liberty. You can stand in front of someone and they'll call a police for you because someone will say they just kidnapped the brother last week. How are we sure you are not a terrorist? Go to the police station and wait there until you vindicate yourself. So we must redefine our strategy for evangelism. I'm saying this so you don't carry zeal and say, Apostle said we must share the love of Jesus. You just trap someone in front of his house and around the corner shouting Jesus and that person is a police officer. Right there and then, they will handcuff you and take you to the police station. So, you see, Jesus, in giving us the great commission, told us what to do. Go ye. He told us where to go into all the world. 
he told us what to do preach he told us who to preach to all creation but he didn't tell us how to do it he left the strategy to be flexible every other thing is fixed except the strategy because the strategy would need to be reinvented with civilization hallelujah so but generally speaking sharing the love of jesus involves preaching how shall they hear the bible says except there is a preacher romans chapter 10 now and that should be 15 am i right on that how beautiful he says at the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things in daniel 12 and verse 3 the bible says they that be wise shall shine like the stars the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore let me tell you the truth it is it is a good way of maximizing your time and your days to make sure that someone comes to jesus there are many of us who have our loved ones they are not yet saved you can give it a try one more time you sowed the seed last year don't be ashamed don't be afraid take that step again in love and then giving giving is one powerful way i know to share the love of jesus if you meet a man who is hungry it is said put the gospel on top of a meal and give that man let him eat both you don't meet a hungry man and tell him forget about food just concentrate on jesus spiritually that may be right but let me tell you you don't know what hunger can do hallelujah the truth is that this ministry and i say it not to embarrass you this ministry is a compendium of very blessed people that is the truth Yes, there are many who God is helping, but there are many people that are, they have seen the mercy of God. Now is a chance to be able to do something for someone. It doesn't have to be something with a lot of trumpet and noise, but right in your neighborhood, an IDP camp somewhere, somewhere you can just do something for someone. Gather some children that are running around and just get two or three Sunday school teachers to put them together. Let them jump around and sing and be happy and feel the love of a parent they may not have and then just give them even if it's a little gift entire budget hundred thousand and god says you did this for me get ready to laugh next year jesus said let the little children come so whoever brings him to them is getting closer to him too and whatever he is giving them your own commission is there too if jesus said let the little children come don't you think the person who pushes them to him also has a share don't close your hands no don't close your hands i'm challenging everybody please make sure you do something let something come out from you to bless you know you know i'm saying this many of you bless me and i'm happy god bless you but you see let's do something for someone who cannot reward you some of you have an area you there are people who sell all kinds of things you can just see them and say listen this is five thousand this is one thousand and they'll be surprised for what what did i do because they are not used to favor you have reintroduced jesus in another way for them let me challenge every leader here especially if you're a leader of a corporate organization a ministry you can be able to do something i'm not putting you under pressure but this is the responsibility of being salt and light families can do it the truth is we are blessed some of us your phone alone can feed a nation your shoe alone can feed a community. I'm not saying sell your shoe and I'm not saying feel guilty for being blessed. Because this one thing again we do in Africa. People feel blessed, get blessed and we make them feel guilty for the rest of their lives. As if they are responsible for our pain. No, that should not be. That's not what I'm advocating. But I'm saying wealth is useless until it is shared. Is someone learning? Five instructions. Let me recap them. Number one, give yourself continually to the word and to prayer. Please do not forget. Number two, invest in your health and your wellness. Rest. Number three, invest in building and maintaining your relationships, your family, your friends, destiny people in your life. Number four, very important, you can start number four. 
go on an end of year retreat go on a personal retreat make it habitual especially for every defining moment in your life and then number five share the love of Jesus to all around you through the ministry of preaching and giving hallelujah why did we call it an impartation service then what does it mean to impart to impart means number one to transfer spiritual possibilities number two to impart means to activate that which is already within you but is still in a state of dormancy impartation has two assignments listen carefully number one to transfer spiritual possibilities from a career by grace to one who is in need of it and is ready to receive but number two impartation also is responsible for activating something you already have but has not found visibility because it is dormant impartation is not always about transference impartation is also about activation there is a grace there is an ability there is a gifting there is something prophecy that is locked up within your spirit and many times it will remain dormant that way except and unless you encounter a genuine grace for impartation two examples and then we begin to pray the spiritual transfer is something that we see all through scripture that graces can be transferred paul said in um philippians chapter 1 i think and verse 7 he says ye are all partakers of my grace ye are all partakers so men can partake of the grace that god has put upon his servant it's been an anthem here every time we talk about impartation we teach these scriptures numbers 27 18 and 20. it says thou shalt take joshua he said take thee joshua the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit and lay your hands upon him 19 set him before eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight i like 20. 20 says and thou shalt put some of your honor upon him i told you you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor is a grace nobody can honor himself honor is an anointing it is conferred upon you what is honor honor means to be rewarded and acknowledged to to match your the your true worth and your true value when the grace for honor is not on you you will never be acknowledged and rewarded to match your true worth. There are many gifted and graced and blessed people, but because they do not have honor, you see, you see that they are being treated unfairly, politically, economically, physically, simply because that grace for honor is not there. The assignment of the grace for honor is to create, to magnify you in the eyes of men and to insist that you are acknowledged and rewarded to match your true worth. Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9. Deuteronomy 34, 9. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. How did that come about? For Moses had laid his hands upon him and the children of Israel hearkened unto him exactly as they did Moses because that grace was upon him. In 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 17, 2 Kings 6, 17. Remember the story of Elisha and the young man? The Bible says, and Elisha prayed because Elisha was seeing a host of heaven, but that gentleman was there and he could not see. There was no transference of anything to him, but Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. The capacity was there, but it was dormant. And the Bible says, and the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. There are things you have already, but it is dormant no matter how beautiful a wall clock is even if you buy a rolex wall clock and there are no batteries powering it it will only stay there as a monument 
you can have the best refrigerator but if it's not plugged to electricity you will not see the potential many of us here carry dormant giftings and graces locked up within our bones but the assignment of an impartation is to activate it and give it visibility hallelujah so I want you to pay attention because the final stage we're just going to just flow very quickly and this impartation is not it's just going to be by speaking we're not doing oil and all of that you just receive and you'll be surprised you will leave this place and things just begin to change in your life remember I have taught you that you know what is on your cup by looking at what is on your head thou anointest my head with oil but I see the result on my cup he does not anoint the cup the cup is a testimony of what is on your head. If the cup is empty, don't blame the cup. It's because the head is empty. Thou anointest my head with oil, my business runs over. Thou anointest my head with oil, the favor upon my life runs over. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. At the end of this impartation, let me now say it in advance. Like we said, as a ministry, we practice the art of the end of year sacrifice as a global family. We have done this for many years. During the last service, we give God's people an opportunity with understanding and with revelation to come in with their sacrificial seeds according to 1 Samuel 1.21. 1 Samuel 1.21. The Bible says, And the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. It was a practice that was done by revelation. Hallelujah. So as a global family, we do this every year. Number one, as a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Number two, as a sacrifice to be able to show the Lord that my seed is part or is involved in what you are doing kingdom building and blessing God's people I, I hate to say it but I submit to you and you know by the grace of God we're a ministry that God has shown mercy I can tell you this uh, for sure so uh, this is this is not some gimmicks we are people of integrity and we love God hallelujah the sacrifice that the believers are giving is not flying to heaven it will be added to the treasury as part of that which does what you know kingdom activity so it is an opportunity God said if I were hungry is it you I will tell I will not tell you but it's a powerful practice that I have done that we have done as a global family everyone who is genuinely connected to this grace at the end of the year the end of year sacrifices with understanding and also to be able to provoke favor and to set yourself on course for the next seasons i hope you know that a harvest of money is not the only thing you get from sacrifices money is the least of the blessings that come from sacrifices there are superior ones like the presence of god weightier dimensions of the presence of god favor wisdom access to the hearts of kings and nobles access to the keys of the hearts of gatekeepers these are weightier blessings that is the capital that buys money. Money itself is a product. The capital that buys money is called true riches. If you have money, you are limited. I have prayed for you many times that may you never be so blessed that all you have is just money. Because the person who has money alone, truly, is not a blessed man. The Bible says, and Abraham was old and well stricken in age. Genesis 24 and verse 1, it says, And God had blessed him in all things. God had blessed him in all things. Genesis 24 and 1. God had blessed him in all things. Is it 24 and 1 or 21 and 1? One of them. God had blessed him in all things. Abraham was old and well stricken in age and the Lord had blessed him that means you can be blessed but not in all things there are many kinds of blessings it says and God is able to make all grace how many all grace you can have some but you can have all grace 
where financially you are prosperous but every time you call on one man a nation will answer you that is true prosperity there are many people who have money but they will call on nations and the money will help them call and nobody answers access to the hearts of kings if you have to use money to pay for everything in your life you are going to suffer because you will get to certain gates that the key that opens them is not money the key that opens them is the kings loving you that one money cannot do it are we together now my reward has won my battle for me the Lord my lifter has won my battle for me I'm a winner man a winner man is won my battle for me Lord my lifter has won my battle for me my reward has won my battle for me I'm a winner man a winner man is won my battle for me hallelujah so when we are done praying please let me speak to our global family don't give yet it's not about money let me do the praying first now we're going to do the impartation afterwards then when we're ready to give as a family of faith we can give and all the details will be given to you was someone blessed already today please rise up on your feet as one who is ready to receive Come, Dave. Oh, my lifting has come. Oh, the grace for favor visibility honor with kings access to the hearts of men visibility over your giftings someone pray please pray 
whether it is in governance, in politics, in business, in ministry, you are before the God of all flesh and he can surprise you by his spirit. My life has changed For I've touched your grace My life has changed My life has changed Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead please hear me any door standing in front of you that has refused to open I call upon the God of my covenant between now and December 31st please hear me in the name of Jesus that grace is coming on someone the grace for open doors that grace now the grace for apacotes katepata the grace for open doors receive that grace right now i speak to every closed door a father be open a father be open help them please i come in the name of he who holds the key of David he says I can open a door that no man can shut and shut a door that no man can open I say to you again I don't care how long that door has been locked in the name of Jesus we break that door open now we break that door open now we break the Pakos Katebata we break that door open now Hear me, there is a strange grace for visibility that is coming on people. Hear me, do you know what it means to be visible? To be visible means to be acknowledged by the optical eyes. You can be there and yet not be visible. Visibility is the key for being living a rewarded life. Until people know you are there, they cannot place a demand on your gifting and grace. Haparika toskata, ebreke toskete bata, abakerosia, help them please. I don't know what has covered your glory, but in the name of Jesus, may that grace for visibility rest on you now. Let it rest on you now. Hear me. Please help them. When baby Jesus was born, no physical man announced and said a baby is born. There was a grace on him that made the Magi, they left their distance and carried gifts. 
gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and they came to pay homage to a baby. Those guys were wise men. Why will they pay homage to a baby? So don't tell me I'm small. They paid homage to a baby. I say it again. Whatever has covered your glory so that those who honor you cannot find you. I lift you by prophecy. Rise to a position of visibility. Rise to a position of visibility. Now hear me, I have taught you here that all blessings come from God through men to men. All blessings come from God through men to men. All troubles come from Satan through men to men. In any case, men are always the midwives of destiny, whether it is from God or from Satan. Hallelujah. There are many of you, God said yes since January, but the man who will say yes on earth has not been available. And there are forces that have pushed them away. Let me prophesy for your destiny helpers. Because you see, let me tell you, you are as powerful as those who support what you represent. The Bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor, not in the multitude of your gift. Every man ordained by God to respond to you favorably this year and for whatever reason, maybe by demonic intrusion, their attention has been taken away from you. I speak to the north, the south and the east and the west. I command your helpers to gravitate towards you. To I command your helpers to gravitate towards you. Gravitate towards you. Hallelujah. One of the mysterious spiritual currencies that buys a life of dignity and honor, including wealth, is this grace called favor. Favor is a grace. Look up, please. The understanding that favor is unmerited is not accurate. Favor is very merited. Favor is multidimensional. The dimension of favor that is not merited is the grace that administers salvation. But favor is merited. Proverbs 13, 15. It says, good understanding procured favor. Please give it to us. Good understanding giveth favor. But the way of the transgressor, the violator of patterns is hard. How do you know favor is on your life? The real proof of favor is access to the heart of men. You know you are favored to the degree to which there are men to answer and attend to the matters of your life. Favor carries a tripartite expression. Please listen. Favor, genuine Bible favor carries a tripartite expression. Number one, unusual kindness. Number two, unusual acceptance. Number three, unusual access. Until this tripartite expression is captured in your life, it is not favor. And I've told you, if it happens only once, it's not favor. It's breakthrough, but not favor. Favor must happen repeatedly, regardless of the circumstances. Exodus 3, 21. And I will give these people favor. Pay attention, please. In the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go help me please ye shall not go empty Psalm 44 and verse 3 for those who have been trusting God for structural establishment here is the secret they got not the land in possession by their own sword neither did their own arm save them but your right hand and thine arm it says and the light of thy countenance because thou hast a favor towards them Esther 2 15 the B part the little village girl Hadassah who was brought from Shushan the Bible says and Esther obtained favor in the eyes of how many all when favor comes on you the only person who cannot bless you is a blind man provided they have eyes to see all them that looked upon her 
Verse 17, not even the king was spared. And the king loved Esther above all the women. And she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. I know what favor is. Believe me with all humility. I can tell you. I may not know everything about it. But there is something I know about the favor of God. As we have received by grace in the name of Jesus upon someone right now someone who is tired Karakos palakatos. from the depth of my heart I pray for you as we have received freely may this grace God favor rest upon you now may this grace God favor rest upon you now may this grace God favor rest upon you now I speak to you obtain unusual kindness from men unusual acceptance with men unusual access to the hearts and the resources of men the favor of God is the number one reason people succeed I have taught you again and again that in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters there are people who you cannot cast away the bible says when a man's ways pleases the lord he makes even his enemies there are some enemies you can't cast away you have to pray for a rite of passage into their heart otherwise that door will not be open they are called gatekeepers the covenant that binds them is beyond their attitude even in their fallen state the throne of god still acknowledges them you won't pray them away you will pray for favor for instance there was no way to bound to bind and cast pharaoh if david was waiting if, if joseph was waiting to bind and cast pharaoh to be prime minister he would have waited forever when god wants to lift joseph he will make pharaoh have a dream that only joseph can interpret and give him access to the palace the wine presser said i remember my wrong this day there was a young man who has been locked up my carelessness has added two years extra to his life and they said go and bring him and the bible says the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon not god there are men who can send for you and bring you out of certain realms it was the king that sent for joseph never to return to the prison again whoever needs to send for you in the name of jesus may the voice of favor call them May the voice of favor call them. May the voice of favor call them. Whoever must send for your family in this period, whoever must send for your ministry, whoever must send for your value, may favor compel them to call you. Hallelujah. Let me tell you the truth. This world is a very selfish world. It takes the favor of God for people to turn their hearts and their minds and their eyes away from the nuances and distractions and to focus on your destiny to lift you. This world is not that kind. I can tell you, people are very selfish. They are about and justifiably so. Everybody is focused on building their destiny. Whatever will make someone suspend attention over his destiny and invest his attention, his credibility, his resources on you must not be natural. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to you, his Israel. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel, he has come to you, his Israel. Can I pray for speed? Listen, again I have taught you in this house 
that the unit of destiny is time and one of the ways to abort a glorious destiny is to corrupt the potential for achieving much with respect to time your lifetime is a measure of your birth from the day you transit separated from your body and one of the strategies to abort great destinies is that satan creates obstructions and impedances on your way so that you are not able to do much in time but there are two systems of advantage that have been deployed by the intelligence of god to remedy that constraint number one is called restoration number two is called speed when these twofold forces work in the life of a man you must gain time restoration brings back time speed accelerates you to do much within a short time this is what I want to declare over your life. Speed is a very powerful system of advantage that much can be done within a short time. In the name of Jesus, I call upon the God who called me, the one by whom we have obtained apostleship. In the name of Jesus Christ, by this apostolic and prophetic mantle, I speak to someone. May that grace for speed come upon you now. May that grace for speed come upon you now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Hallelujah. Let me declare over you. If there is anybody here that the spirit of death is already tracking, that 20, help them please, that 2022 will be your last year. And then something mysterious will happen in the name of Jesus I pray you shall not die I say it to you prophetically you shall not die not by the arrows that fly by day not the noisome pestilences not the destruction that wastes in noonday I speak to you that a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side but none shall come nigh you with your eyes will you see and behold even the reward of the wicked in the name of Jesus Christ Job said the Lord will deliver you from six things Yes, seven. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. Whoever has spoken against you and programmed the climate of death, I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood. I cancel that negative statement. In the name of Jesus. The final prayer I'll pray for you. Please be patient. And then, since he's here, the prophet of God. Pastor Emos Fenwa, I would just plead with him to just come, even if it's just in a minute, to make a prophetic declaration over you. And I've seen God honor the words upon his mouth, and I know what God can do when our hearts are open to receive. Hallelujah. And then we'll wrap up with our end of year sacrifice, and that will be it. I want to pray concerning your finances. Please look up. I don't believe in poverty. It's already clear there is no point hiding or playing around it there's there's nothing nothing to explain about it at all I'm not talking of fanatism and this obsession for money we are kingdom people driven by purpose and intelligence so when we talk about things like this please this is not an attempt to fuel lust in the heart of one who is not serious with God we are, we are talking about the king that's why I started by telling you that our ultimate motivation is to see Jesus revealed I have taught you here that money has three major assignments number one for your comfort god blesses us so that we can live a comfortable life number two god blesses us so that we can provide financial resources for kingdom advance number three god blesses us so that he can give us an opportunity to be a blessing to a dying world in a definite and a practical way money becomes a tool and evidence to that blessing to help us and financially speaking money has two assignments number one efficiency number two time redemption that's it the assignment of money in the life of any believer is to help you be efficient efficiency is a product of gaining time it's a dominion system number two time redemption it affords you the opportunity to do much within time and then to be efficient while you do so. 
So one of the ways to waste your time is to keep you limited financially. This finance thing has limited a lot of people, especially because of the realities that have happened across the economy of nations. I have taught you here that there are many dimensions of wealth and I am not one of those preachers that downplay the place of value, intelligence, contribution. I have taught you extensively. There is an economic system to the kingdom. There is a science to wealth. Wealth is not arbitrary. It's, it's, it's a response to value. There are intelligent people here, business people, captains of industry, and I'm not here as a man of God to downplay your pedigree, but I can tell you there is a prophetic dimension to wealth. In the Bible, every time there was an economic problem, it was not economists that were called. It was the prophet that had to answer. Why is there an economic problem? And the prophet said, by this time, tomorrow. The prophetic dimension to wealth is called sovereign wealth. This is not wealth by value. This is wealth by the finger of God. It, it happens through men, but as instructed by God. When that, when the prophetic word comes, let me tell you what happens. The spirit of wisdom follows that prophetic word and starts looking for human actors that must make that word not look like a lie. So there were four lepers who sat down and they did not even know what started moving them. They said, why do we sit down here? That courage was not normal. It was the product of the spirit of wisdom responding to the prophecy of Elijah, Elisha in Samaria. One person sent by God can schedule a season in your life that brings you to permanent rest. Are you ready to receive? And by a prophet, he says, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, no matter how blessed you are, I have taught you here that the standard of being financially blessed is that you can give so much to the kingdom without it affecting your overall financial health. If you have not gotten to that state, it means you must open your heart for more. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the privilege of grace and apostleship, and by the power of the prophetic, I speak over someone. May that grace that makes rich, may that grace that can empower a man, rolling away financial shame from lives and families, receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Upon the works of your hands, receive it. Upon your mind, receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ. And when Saul met with prophet Samuel, Samuel told him, number one, the donkey you have been looking for has been found. Prophecy brings restoration. Number two, as you return, you will find three men holding two loaves of bread. They will salute you and give you. That is honor and favor. Number three, you will come to the garrison of the Philistines and that the hand of the Lord will come upon you and you will begin to prophesy. Truly, the prophetic can bring prosperity. It can be, not, it can be abused, but within the boundary of scripture and the boundary of doctrine for the believer, it can work wonders. I say it again. The man to surprise you by God, I send them to you prophetically. The man raised by God to be his system of help towards your life and finances, to bail you out from shame and reproach, receive of their ministry right now. Hallelujah. Please let's invite Pastor Emos Fenwa for a minute or two. Be ready to receive. Open up your heart to receive as he speaks and then we'll be ready with our sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says in Psalm 65 verse 11, Thou crowned the year with thy goodness and thy backdrop fatness. I speak as the year is running to an end. Your life shall be crowned with goodness. Goodness over your health over your ministry over your marriage everywhere you go as from now you are favored the lord protects you for the rest of the year your life is preserved as you leave this meeting today good news everywhere within 24 hours good news everywhere Test message of good news. 
email of good news your doors are open your doors are open your doors are open receive it testimony in your mouth thank you father in jesus name we pray thank you let's appreciate him hallelujah everyone stand now it's my joy to pray over our sacrifices and our givings hallelujah not just tonight but continually um, up until we resume please everyone make sure there's no distraction I want to pray I'm a product of God's mercy and I know what sacrifice has done and can do and as a global ministry we have a responsibility by covenant and with understanding to always wrap up the year with a prophetic sacrifice I have seen God turn the lives of people my life has been turned around by the power of sacrifice and so I'm going to speak over the seeds the sacrifice um, I don't know how we'll do it I if there are people who have it here unfortunately I don't know if the ushers if we can I don't know how we're going to do it but here's what will happen God will give an opportunity I'm seeing people lift there are people who came with it okay do we have ushers let's let's okay so th this is what will happen please listen carefully Th this is what will happen as soon as I pray um, the offering baskets will go around you don't have to come out just right where you are you can just drop it make sure that the ushers are there and then you just drop it as I speak for those who are doing any electronic transfers um, is going to be projected all are our global family in the US Europe the accounts are there and then you can use all the provisions my apologies for those who may have any difficulty be patient and call the finance department they will help you but let's pray you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say thank for in my life my life, be glorified, be glorified. Hallelujah. Father, as a ministry and as a global family, we come before you with our hearts full of thanksgiving. We bring this sacrifice to you first because we love you sincerely. You have been good and merciful to men, families institutions governments businesses nations regions and as many who are connected to this ministry kings politicians captains of industry economists and all kinds of people pastors prophets apostles the fivefold we have come tonight as is our custom to honor you Lord, these seeds are not flying and going to heaven. They will be used here on earth. But we pray that the purity and the sincerity of our worship and our giving. Lord, there are people who have come here with sacrifices of all sorts. You are not a fraudster. Oh God, you are not a scammer. Neither are we who represent you. Therefore, we come by the blood of the Lamb. And I decree over every sacrifice you have sown in tears. May you reap in joy. You have sown in tears as a pastor, a church, a family, a business, a government, a region. In the name of Jesus, may you reap with joy. May you reap in joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. By reason of this seed and sacrifice that you are placing upon the altar. In the name of Jesus, may adversity be far forever from your life. May the sacrifice that you are placing right now become a prophetic ladder that shoots you into dimensions unimagined. I cry to the God of my covenant. God, I pray. I cry from the depth of my heart over your people. Let no one here give and regret it. Let no one here give and feel they were defrauded. Lord, there are people you will surprise them even before the service ends. Yeah. 
in the name of Jesus Christ by reason of this sacrifice let death be averted by reason of this sacrifice let prophetic connections of all sorts happen by reason of this sacrifice may your health be preserved and hear me if there is anyone here in any kind of financial trouble personally or corporately your ministry is in debt your family is in debt your business is in debt or you are in debt i decree and declare by the power of the prophetic come out of that situation now come out of that situation now this seed you are sowing may your children to the fourth generation reap from it in the name of jesus christ amen and amen please go ahead and give those across the globe now is your time to give who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle Amen, amen. Let's honor him, His Excellency. God bless you, sir. God bless you. It's an honor to have you here. Thank you so much. The former Senate President, let's honor him again. Give him a big, big God bless you. Thank you so much, sir. Hallelujah. You are here and you are yet to make Jesus Lord of your life. Please, let's minimize movement. This is our final service. Let's honor Jesus. As you heard me teach, the Holy Ghost began to speak to you that in this final service of 2022, you should not come and go back the way you came. You heard the testimony of the gentleman. For some of you, you were invited. Some of you are in all the overflows. You are outside and you are among the many who are following from across the globe. Now is an opportunity for you to make Jesus Lord of your life. The issue of being saved and being born again is not a religious issue at all. The Bible declares that ye must be born again. Then there is a second category, those who have given their hearts to the Lord, but for some reason, your life has gone haywire and you need restoration. Come, let him come. I'm going to count one to five very quickly because of our time. I'd like you to boldly leave your seat and come and stand here right now. This is our final service for 2022. Wherever you are, inside all the overflows, outside, and for those who are following online by way of television, by way of the internet, or by way of a rebroadcast, Jesus is giving you a new opportunity. Let's honor them as they come. Come. 
If you're coming, please run. Come. 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 And we're standing here only because. And we're standing here only because you made, you made a way. Jesus this is our final service we have a minute and then we're done with church please come we believe in the salvation of souls it is at the core of what we represent and so let me encourage everyone please spare us a minute while we honor this and then we're done thank you for your patience if you're coming please run join them I'm about to lead God's people to pray all who are in the overflow please move to your LED screens those outside move to your LED screens those following from your homes, your offices, you're following by way of um, the internet. Now is an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. You cannot afford to let another day pass without making this noble decision. Thank you very much for those of you who are here, young, old, male, female. You're welcome. Jesus welcomes everyone. May I request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender to Jesus. And please say this after me, mean it from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I declare that I believe in you. I declare that I love you with all my heart. I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I receive forgiveness. I receive a new life and I declare that from tonight and forever I am a child of God washed by the blood of the Lamb I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name keep your hands lifted father we thank you for bringing these ones the Bible declares that as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away they have come by the authority of Scripture I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken from off your life. I call you recipients of the life of God. Bona fide recipients in the name of Jesus. And I declare that you begin to walk in righteousness from tonight. Every habit that needs to die, dies. Every challenge that needs to go, it leaves you right now. In the name of Jesus. From tonight, you go forward ever and backward never. For it is in Jesus' much less name that we have prayed. Congratulations. God bless you. Let me request very quickly that you follow our counselors to my right, which will be your left. Very quickly, they will have a word with you and you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them very quickly. Thank you. Is this the best you can do, Koinonia? Hallelujah. Let's take a few announcements and then we are done. Like you've heard tonight marks our final service for 2022. Thank you, everyone for making this year a year of marvelous light. That means we're not going to be having services here. Next, as our next service will be on the 22nd of January. We're resuming officially on the 22nd of January, 2023. If you will be here alive, clap for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want you to know that all our social media platforms will be very active, very, very active. So make sure that you're part of this for your spiritual build up and development. There'll be strategic teachings that would come uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Make sure that you are part of it and um, for your spiritual edification. And then for the School of Ministry, please, I'd like you to watch out the first week by first week of January. All of the details will come out and then we'll be ready for registration. So all last year we had over 5,000 students. Unfortunately, we we're only able to take in both campuses 800 students. While we're still collaborating with several people to give it a global expression, um, it comes with a lot of research and study. So we are, we're allowing very intelligent minds to advise and guide us. Um, while that is happening, we still maintain two campuses for now, Zaria and Abuja. So please prepare 
those who are going to be traveling from your various nations, make sure you prepare and um, we'll give you the links when it's time so that you can meet the coordinators and then they advise you on what to do. We'll give you the link to apply first week of January. Then on the 31st, 31st of December by 6 p.m. on the dot GMT plus one Nigerian time, please make sure that you hook up to all our social media platforms. We'll be releasing the prophetic word that guides us for 2023. Hallelujah. For all of you who will be traveling, I declare safety for you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare that this will be the best season for you ever. Make sure that you pay attention to these instructions that you have received tonight. And for all who have come, our dignitaries, I truly love and honor and celebrate and appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time. Let's give them a big God bless you those from the business political class captains of industry thank you very much our international guests one more time we bless you let's give them a big big god bless you and for all who have traveled outside of abuja we thank you thank you thank you so much pastor sir we thank you again and your dear wife and your team may the lord bless you the team that came in from zaria we returned from zaria yesterday all of you may the lord bless you in Jesus name let's rise up as a family of faith as we share the grace and then wrap it up for the year may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit let it rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever amen may God bless you koinonia Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, see you in 2023.